Good evening, everyone. Thank you very much for joining us once more on this platform where we study the word of God. Today, we'll be looking at what the Bible has to say on the environment. And I trust that at the end of this lesson, that we'll all be appreciative of God's creation and understand our role in God's creation, preserving, keeping it. And so, you know, before we start officially and have Sister Dubi that pray on our behalf, I just want to read Psalms 8 verse 9, which is also the golden text of this lesson. It says, O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. How excellent is God's name in all the earth. I'm excited to hear the lesson this afternoon, our adult Sunday school lesson. And I'm going to ask that we make it interactive, respond to the questions um, that are posed by our teacher. And if you are unclear on any aspect of the lesson, feel free to ask a question so you can all leave here learning, understanding what the Bible has to say about the environment. Would you bow your heads, everyone, as we ask Sister Dubidad to pray for us and our teacher. Bless the Lord. Good evening, everyone. Good we evening. are giving God thanks again for another Sunday school. We give God thanks for his word. We give him thanks for his keeping through the course of the week. We give him thanks for life. We give him thanks for the environment. We give him thanks for his creation because God is certainly a good God and he knows exactly what we need to survive in this creation. Father, we give you thanks this afternoon for your love. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercies. We thank you, Lord, that you have been good to us. You have been our supplier. Hallelujah. And God, as we are going to go into your word, bless God. Father, we pray, God, that you will direct every word to our heart this evening. We pray, Father God, that you will inspire our teacher. Father God, we pray, Lord God, that you will make teaching easy this evening, God. And we pray, Lord God, that God, that you will open our hearts and our thoughts as we go into your word, God. It's a lesson, Father God, that will bring glory to you, God, because your word are true. So, Father, we pray, God, that you'll touch everyone on this platform. Father, we pray, oh, God, especially for our teacher and our superintendents, we pray, God, that every student, oh, oh God, will be touched by a word this evening. And, Father, we place us in your hands, Lord. God, your word is already anointed. So we pray your anointing will flow in this session. Father, we look to you and we give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Bless Amen. the Lord. Bless, bless the, the Lord. Lord. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. The Lord, bless the Lord, oh my soul. Oh, and all that is within, within me, bless, bless his holy, holy name. name. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We give God you, all Jesus. the honor. And all the glory, because certainly he made this universe. Hallelujah. And he has been keeping us. He has been keeping, you know, the grass of the, of the, of the, of the earth. Yes. You know, the birds of the air. The, yes, the God. The sea, and he continues to do so. Yes, the Lord. Mercy. I want to just say thank you very much. And I want to pray that, you know, I pray for that this week will be an awesome week for you as you reflect after we listen to this lesson today and we reflect on God's creation oh, and, Thank you, and, mercies and, and, and his grace you know that has been extended towards us that we'll have a wonderful week of gratitude to our God 
put your hands together and help me. Open your mic, put your hands together and help me welcome our teacher, Sister Paulette Morgan. Welcome, Sister Morgan. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thanks for Thank joining us. Over to you. Thank Sister you. Morgan. Thank you, thank you, thank you so very much for the welcome. Greetings, everyone. Greetings. Greetings. that we all are doing well and we are safe from this flood and that we were not impacted negatively. And we're so giving thanks. We are, we are here. We are here. Amen. So and we are here. Thanks. God, we awesome. Thanks. All right. Um, I just want to ask you to remember my family in your prayers. Um, Savannah is not feeling so well, neither her mother. Okay. And yes, I'm not 200 either, but wow. I we're con we're continuing to pray and um hoping that all will be well, that we'll be out for work and school for you know tomorrow. So okay. please remember us in your prayers. All right, you. as our able superintendent gave the introduction of our lesson today. This afternoon, right? This evening. It's an awesome lesson. And uh, this is something that we often overlook. And why, as Christians, we are to focus on the environment. All right? So we're going to look at the Bible on the environment. Now, what does the Bible have to say? Or what, does Christ what do Christians have to do with the earth, the creation? It's all about just worshiping God, right? Is going to church and praising and keeping away from sins, but it's that's not it's far beyond that. So we're gonna focus on the the environment. Let me just share. Let me see if I have okay, let me just share my screen. I'm not being able to. Okay, good. Seeing the option now. Share. All right. Are you able to see my screen? Yes. Wonderful. All right. Let me put it on slideshow that you can from the beginning. Okay. All right. So the Bible on the environment. So let me just go through a little bit of what this lesson entails before I continue with the introduction that was starting so um the earth is the lord's and all is fullness psalm 24 verse 1 this is a, a verse scripture verse that we all know the lord is the earth the earth is the lord's and its fullness so the earth belongs to the lord all right we're going to see more of that and i'm looking at some pictures here all right can you see the pictures clearly we're seeing yes. different parts of our environment. We're going to talk about them later. So there is a lovely um, land there with plants and the, the, the grass overgrown. There is a beach side with the dirty bottles and shoes and all kind of a trash there. And we are going to understand why we are looking at Christians stewarding the, the environment. Okay, so as usual, we have three sections. The environmental, the environment is God's creation. And the scriptures, and I would love for you to grab your Bibles and your notebooks because we're going to be looking through the, the, the scriptures. I will not be posting the scriptures um to, tonight. Usually I would have it up, but I do hope you have your Bibles open. So it's Colossi Colossians 1. Verse 15 to 17, Proverbs 3, verse 19 to 20, and Luke 12, 22 to 31. We have a few scriptures to look at tonight. And then second part, we'll be looking at Christians must to our creation. Genesis 1, 26 to 30, Psalm 8, verse 1 to 9. And third and final part, God will redeem creation. Romans 8, verse 18 to 23. And Isaiah 11, verse 3 to 9. Revelation 22, verse 1 to 5. So central truth 
Christians must be faithful stewards of God's creation. Right? So that is the truth we're looking at. Christians must be faithful stewards of God's creation. And let us look at the term faithful when we're going through. Appreciate and steward faithfully our God-given world. Evangelism emphasis, caring for God's earthly creation testifies of our faithfulness to our creator. And this, the, the Psalm 8 verse 9 was done earlier. O Lord, O Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. When you look at the animals, how excellent is thy name? You go outside and you look up. How excellent is thy name? You walk down the road and you see the rocks and you, how excellent is thy name in all the earth? Amen? All right. So let's just do a little brainstorming now. What is the environment? And as for time, you know, for the interest of time, I'm going to be taking like two persons. So the first two persons ready to jump up. What is the environment? What you think the environment is? And think about the second one. How do we take care of the environment daily? Anybody? One, two, three. The earth. Um, the space, nature, where we live, where God has placed us, what he has built, you know, um, for us to live in. Okay. So the, Thank universe, you. the universe. The universe. Amen. Yeah. Including everything. Plants, animals. Animals, trees, yeah. Okay. Um. Even even the the, the 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 air that is around us, huh? Yes, that we need to take care of, of as well. How yes. do we take care of the environment daily? What are some of the things that we do to take care of the environment? Keep it clean by not um contributing to pollution. Okay, Sister Pernell, just a moment, Sister Marva, Sister Pernell said the space around us. Okay, thank you for contributing. All right, I'll go back to you, Samarva. How do we say keep the place clean? Yes, and not contribute to pollution of the atmosphere. Not the atmosphere. Okay, so the environment is everything around us. Once you exist, there's an environment and so there is the literal environment and there is the spiritual environment around us. All right. Okay. Oh, why is this stitch on me? All right, let's continue. I'm okay. We worship God not the environment let me go a little we worship god and not the environment so taking care of the environment is a natural overflow of our relationship with god so if we have a relationship with god it's not just getting down on our knees and praying and calling to him and so on and asking for things but the things that we do daily you know, our surrounding, the things that the Lord has blessed us with, our cars, our houses, our lands, and how we how we treat the things that we have, our properties and so on, you know, will um is, is showing our relationship with God. So we understand the environment is temporal. The environment is temporal, so it's not going to be forever, whatever temp environment it is. It is not, and it is not, it's temporal and it's not eternal. All right, it's temporal and it's not eternal. So some of the some of these things that we're going to be looking at throughout our lessons, and we're going to look at certain scriptures as we go along. So the first section we're going to look at is created. The environment is God's creation. 
the environment is God's creation. And the first part of the, the, the lesson, we're going to look at Colossians 1, verse 15 to 17, and Proverbs 3, 19 to 20. Let us grab our Bible. Now, created by him and for him. Who is him we're talking about here? The environment is created for him and by him and for him. So God. I'm going to put God, yes, amen. G G Colossians 1.15, who, who is the image of the invisible God? The firstborn every cre of every creature. By him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him. And he's before all things and by him all things consist. Proverbs 3, verse 19, the Lord by wisdom hath founded the earth. By understanding hath he established the heavens. By his knowledge, the depths are broken up and the clouds drop down the dew. That's the first scripture that we're looking at, Colossians and Proverbs. So here, Paul would have been mentioning certain things in, in his writing. All right. And he meant it he begins the, the script the, the lesson by, by by this question or this 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 phrase who is right and we wonder who he's talking about so who is is speaking of the son right the son was with him and if you remember everything goes back to the creation yes Genesis let us make man let us do this right so the son has been with him and so the creation was made by him and for him all right paul had some things to talk about in terms of his beliefs um he talks about his prayers and he talks about the relationship that he has with 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 God he said that there is no distinction between prayer and belief he also think that his belief is founded on discovered through and flows out of prayer so you see prayer so we have a belief and we have our prayer so there's he believes that there's no distinction between prayer and belief so his belief is founded on and discovered through and flows out of prayer. He also talks that his con um, shares that his conduct is based on his belief, right? And that his belief is based on prayer, and that his prayer is based on this, this now on his relationship. With God, so we pray to God according to the relationship we have with Him. How often do we pray? Again, tells the kind of relationship that we we have with the Lord. All right, so let's continue. Image on your screen, you see image of the invisible God. Image of the invisible God. Now, Christ resembles, the Son resembles God. And here I'm not talking about physical. We're not talking about, about physical resemblance. We're talking about a, a representational issue here. God, Jesus represents the reality of God. Are you there with me? He is the visible image of the invisible God. We understand, we know that God is invisible. But the Son became visible 
at one stage, right? At one time, when he became visible. So he represents God, who is invisible. And you can look at John 1, verse 18, to further look at some more reading. For he is God made flesh. So Christ is God made flesh. Still in John 1. Christ is God, is God made flesh. All right. And we also know that he is, a, is an active participant in the Trinity. So Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. So he's an active participant in the Trinity. He's also first born. What does that mean? The term firstborn, may, you may look at it with two different, you know, ways, two different meanings. You could look at it literally that he was born first, right? Because we are all children of God, right? Who is a firstborn? Christ. Christ was born before us. So he was made into existence before us. So he's a firstborn. Also, we can look at it as the distinct privilege. No, he sits at the right hand of God. There are certain privileges that Christ has that we don't have. So he's a privileged one. So if you are a firstborn, then there are certain privileges that you have. Everybody will have to look up to you. I remember, at, you know, even in my family, um, my, that my sister is the eldest. And she, whatever she says, goes, right? And our parents say, well, she is your biggest sister. Don't talk to her like that, right? And then there are certain things that you, there are certain privileges that she would have gotten. She'll be able to go certain places in which we were, were not able to go because she was the eldest one and so on. All right? So certain privileges were given to the Almighty. All right? Are we understanding so far before we get into the whole environment? Remember, we are taking back to creation. All right? Amen. In, Amen. All right. Oh. So, supreme. Okay, he's supreme. It, this here, it refers to the unique place of Christ among creation. As the exalted one. The one to be revered. The one we pay homage to. The one who reigns the supreme, right? So when we bow before him and we say, we say, my almighty, all powerful, right? Because he's supreme, he's above, he's set above, right? Very exalted one. So Paul continues to talk about the supremacy in Colossians 1, verse 16. For by him were all things created, right? Because of him, all things are created. So our Christ is the cause, or should we say the origin of creation? Amen, the firstborn. So he's the, the, or, the reason, the cause, the origin of creation. So everything was created for his benefit. And that is why we say we all give all glory to the Lord. It's, it's, about, it's about him. It's not about us. So whatever is done is to give glory unto the almighty God. Okay? So everything was created for his benefit, benefit for him and for him only. So Whatever is, well, whatever is brought into existence, it's all to benefit Christ. All right? So, Christ created the environment to bring order out of chaos. And we, let us go back to Genesis when it said that the, 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 it was without form. Right? 
and they, so they created you know the place was dark and the water and so the land and you know separated from the water and light there was light and the light separated from the darkness so there was no form there was no structure right so if you remember the Gen genesis story and so christ create quite a lot of activity and should i say dominion as well they are subject to him and will answer to him we answer to him creation answers to our christ in John 1, verse 1 to 3, you can write it down and we can read it later. Further looks at this, that he is before all things. Christ was before all things. Before they were, he was. In John, in John it says that in the beginning was the word and the word was with God. Was with God. And the word, all right, so was God, was God before they were, he was, though his power, through his power, all things, through his power, all things, not some things, you know, all things been permanently framed. Now, temporary, no, nothing going to pop off. Through him, through him, through his power, all things consist. All things consist. And so here we're talking about Christ, Jesus Christ is now, is the kind of a, let us say kind of a, a glue that holds everything together. Because it's about him. For him. For his benefit, because of him, we are in existence. Amen? All right, let's go to the next slide. Now, Jesus warned us about the dangers of hypocrisy. All right, let us look at Luke 12, verse 1 to 12. Okay, Jesus warned us about the dangers of hypocrisy and misunderstanding what material goods can and cannot do for us. He continued saying and revealing that goods, that material goods are neither good. Material things in itself will not do anything for any anybody, not for me, not for you. Rather, it is concerned, it's about whom or what we place our trust. So who do we put our trust in? Is it about the positions, the what we have, the environment? Who do we put our trust in? So material things, cannot do for us material goods can and cannot do for us and we should put our trust place our trust in the eternal matters all right now jesus was here talking to is disciples jesus was here talking to his disciples all right and he was teaching them and once you're a disciple you follow and you learn so jesus said follow me and there are some scriptures i have i i, I put on screen follow me and this is an invitation so you either follow or you don't follow. So if you're going to follow him, you have made up your mind to go and learn to so your in training. 
And in training, they are going to learn how you are going to follow him, the things that you are going to do. So he would have given sermons, he would have given teachings, and they would have learned. So the early church, the early church would, 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 would have a certain pattern of training that they'll teach their disciples how to behave and how to lead and so on. So can we, okay, before I, I ask that question, right? Look at how we uh, as Christian uh, leaders today, what kind of teaching do we get in terms of how to, to minister and how to care for each other? And when we learn about that, do we take it to the next level by actually doing as we are taught? Because sometimes we learn something and it's just to get a grade. But do we actually put it into practice? So let us look at the modern church. Do you think we are actually taking this task as how God wants it to be done? As those disciples, how they were fed with, with, with the teaching and how they follow? Is this, is this a way of, um, do we violate the teaching, the command of Jesus Christ? Or do we put our, 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 our profession in front to say, okay, I'm Dr. Paulette. And because I'm Dr. Paulette, I will, I will put, you know, the, I'll interpret the scripture my way. And I will not allow the, the Holy Spirit to direct me in any shape or form. So the question is, how do, how do you think the modern church has failed miserably at this task? Anybody can share? Good evening. Um, excellent teacher. Um, oh, uh, good, <laughs> good evening, yes. Um, Bishop. Yes, I think that um, the, the modern church, we have uh, drifted so much from the dependence on the Holy Spirit and the direction in terms of following um, some of these, um, may I say, commands and directives. In that, yes, we have become, in terms of more educated and, uh, you know, learn as it relates to the word. Yes. Uh, but at the same time, we have somewhat drifted and you, you mentioned in terms of sometimes, you know, maybe a doctor so and so interpretation. And we have heard and seen sometimes some person because of how, um, you know, well learned they think that they are, when they give a, 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 a word or their word and a scripture or a particular topic, they present it sometimes as if it's the gospel. It's the only way it is so. So I've seen a bit of that. And so, you know, I would say that we have uh, um, in some ways, um, you know, shifted and drifted from even the, the, how the early church would have depended on the, the, the Holy Spirit and also that pure and undiluted way of just, you know, taking God's word as is. You heard it from the bishop. Thank you so very much, bishop. So yes, ignoring yes. this this kind of stewardship is, is very improper. And um, we all know this is, we're talking about hum humanity is a part of creation. And if we're not going to steward um, the, cre the, the creation well, it's not going to be pleasing to the Lord. And this is a simple example of in the church, of all we disciple. All right? We don't have time to get into much of that. So let us, Carry on. All right. So let us consider the birds and the flowers. Let's consider the birds and the flowers. Luke 12, verse 22 to 31. You see, you have some things there. The raven, you have anxiousness, and they have likes of the This thing gets in the way now. Okay. So. Of the field and their splendor. Right. Thank you. There's something locking my screen there. That's okay. All right. 
Okay, so let us look. Let before we go into that, the 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 there is a command, and I call it a command. Do not worry. Do not worry. Do not be anxious. Take no thought about those um you know certain areas. Your life. Your soul, what we're going to eat, what we're going to wear, right? Why are we thinking about what we're going to eat tomorrow, what we're going to wear? So there's, there's, there's an encouragement to say, don't take no thought of that. And if you look at Luke 12, verse 22, I say, do not worry or be anxious about three particular areas. One, your life. Don't worry about your life because who is in charge? God is in charge of creation. And um, David would encourage when they, if they, when David, you know, probably thought of thinking of worrying about his life. In Psalm 23, he, he encouraged himself. Though I, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil for the watch with me. Thy rod and I stop, they comfort me. All right. So when if you feel like you're going to worry about, take no thought of that encourage yourself that god is the head of your life all right what are you don't worry about what you're going to eat or what you are going to wear so it's not a matter of you're saying what i have to plan i have to use wisdom that's not what we're talking about right you don't going to sit down or you're going to be a lazy person that's not what jesus christ was encouraging either right? Don't be concerned about certain things. Don't think about what all the fa my family is going to, 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 to survive in terms of security, security wise. Because God emphasizes life is more than, more than what we are thinking about. And we must trust God for everything without fretting, without worrying, because there's a scripture, I don't remember what the scripture is taken from, but it says when you worry, I'm paraphrasing, we call God a liar, right? Because he said that we are to trust him and he will take care of us. So life is more than just that. And we must trust God for everything without fretting because that is needless. That's not necessary at all. All right. If you should first just go outside and without you know a lot of lights, you know, lights in your area and you look up and all you can see is wow, what an oh awesome, right? When you the scripture talk about the lilies, right? In the I'm not gonna read the entire scripture today, talk about the lilies. And it's talking about how they are beautifully arrayed. And it's like, it, 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 there's a comparison made with Solomon in all his glory, right? And it, here he's going to also talk about the ravens, right? What about the ravens? The raven, neither farm nor store, but the raven enjoys life. He's nourished and he's fed. Are you with me? Are we Maybe. there? Amen. The raven Amen. is fed. Amen. The raven will plant anything, but the raven is fed. And guess what? We are more excellent. We are better. We are at a higher class. More than, precious than they. They are more precious. Yes, precious. Yes, more precious than the foes. And 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 of the air, or we, you know, we know the story. Jesus teaches that anxiousness. You know, sometimes we think and we overthink, and we get so overwhelmed, and it reached that point where we even start getting sick. It does not enhance our lives. It makes it worse because when we worry, we're going to get sick. It's going to become physical. 
the story was told. I don't know if it's a true story, but this is something that I was told that this man, a farmer, he was at his little hut in the bush and it was raining so heavily and he fell asleep. But he he has cows as well. So he would have put the, the rope and his machete down and then he would have fell asleep. So in the dark, he woke up and he saw the rope wrapped up and he thought it was a snake and he worried and got sick and passed out because he thought it was a snake, right? So this is to say that when we worry, we get sick. It's not, it's not benefiting in our lives at all when we get too anxious. That's why the scripture says, be anxious for nothing, right? In Philippians, be anxious for nothing. All right? So being anxious is not going to add one hour, not even a minute to our life. Not a thing is going to do for us. It will and make to, us... May I add? What? You yes. know, it, it demonstrates a lack of trust in a God. Lot. Yes. You know, um, we don't trust him to take care of our needs. That's why we worry, you know. Yes. We don't trust him to take care of us and to protect us and to, you know, clothe us, etc. We just don't. When we that's why persons worry. Amen. Amen. Yes. But so we need so to trust true. the Lord. Amen. Amen. Okay, so another one. We we are admonished to carefully contemplate, consider, focus the lights of the field and their splendor. Wow. Contemplate, evaluate, look, consider, look at them, look off the field, look at the lights of the field and their splendor. How beautiful are they? Under God's constant care and provision, they are far more radiant than even the kingly apparel of Solomon. So what is he saying that? We are his children. We are his beautiful creation. Why are we worrying when we don't have to? As he said, we need to trust the Lord. And again, your belief coupled with prayer and of course prayer shows the relationship that you have with the lord and if you you have a belief in god and you pray and establish that relationship with the lord you would do trust him and if you believe that the lord will take care of you then you will not worry you see the connection and then when we worry and get sick well, bishop atkins uh, ah Pray for me. But Pray we call me. this on ourselves. Huh? We call this on ourselves. So the encouragement is that we must trust in Lord. Trust in the Lord. Look at the lily. Look at the field. The likeness of the, you know, the likes of the field and the splendor. How beautiful and gorgeous it, it is. And he's who take care of that. God takes care of that. So we have this rain. And in my little backyard, I planted a, a planting. And the rain fell, and I'm telling you, just shoot up that rain from above. I was trying to water it with the water that we have, but it wasn't so splendor. Ring, <laughs> I'm finding this word, and I'm looking at it's beautiful, it's growing nicely because the rain comes from above. So, God takes care, just like how God takes care of the plant, He will take care of us because we are at another level. And he's showing that to say, if I can take care of those things, how much will I take care of you? Just trust me. Amen. All right. I'm going to see if I can move, move up a little because we're almost at seven o'clock. Oh, my goodness. So we're at section two. We're now at section two. All right. And section two, Christians must store the 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 the, the the environment, the creation.
Okay. God's charge to Adam and Eve. So we go to Genesis 1, 26 to 30. Right? And I beg you to please, we may not have time to read all of it now. Please go through with the scripture and attach it to the notes that you are making. Genesis 1, 26 to 30. And God said, let us make man in our, our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God had, see, he has made Adam and Eve. God is, is Adam and Eve. Man was put above the other part of creation. So we are the head of the, cre of the creation. Amen. So remember, we are made in the image and likeness of God. Right? So when we look at the image, you know, something cut out. Representation. Okay. Representation. Let me not use that style yet. All right? Um, we are fashioned after his own image. Or a character should be representing that of Christ. So let us carry on. We should what? Reflect his glory and attributes in our character and action. So whatever you do, wherever you are, when I see you, when they see us, they should see Christ because we are representing him. So when you open your mouth to speak, they hear your language and they know, uh-uh, this person he is here. No, you have, this person is here, but she's not from here. All right? You ever been, you know, you especially the foreigners come here. They are in our midst here in Jamaica. But when they open their mouth, you realize that they are not from here. So it's like, as Christians, we are in the world here, but we are not, we're, we're not of the world. We are here now, but we are not of the world. We are separate and apart. So his glory and attributes in our character and actions. We should also recognize and value that glory in others. As they are part of his creative glory. Secondly, we are going to see that we have been given dominion. We have been given dominion. When we get dominion, we have some form of authority. We get a chance to, to probably to, 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 to rule. Right? We are set apart. So we, we, we are given that little tip above so we have been given authority over creation to rule, to rule it, to take care of it after the character and according to the directives of who? Of God. So God, there is a there is a there, there is a, a specification for us. Yes, you are above. You are to, but you are to take care of everything that is put under you. How, how many of us are taking care of the creation? All right. Any questions so far? Any questions so far? All right. Okay. So, as such as we are God's caretakers over all he created, we are God's caretaker. Strong term. If you're a caretaker of, of a house, anything happens, you are accountable. So, if we, if we see this as um, we are 
accountable for God's creation, then I think we'll treat the creation in a, in a better form. Don't you think? So God gave the plants, the plants and the animals to sustain and 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 and, and feed us. We grab the chicken, we grab the callaloo. So if we don't take care of our plants, we won't have anything to eat. If we don't plant, if we don't care for the seeds and plant them like the farmers do, if we don't do that, we won't have anything to eat. And then if we don't have anything to eat, we are going to be stressed and then we are going to lose our trust and then we are going to get sick. All right. So what we're saying God gave plants and animals to sustain and feed us. So, if any group should be concerned with proper stewardship of the environment, it is those whom God charged with its care. And I'm putting it back to church leaders as well. Do we, how, how do we take care of the, the, the creation? Right? Do we not just leaders, but do we get involved in community to if to, to to create changes of how we are to take care of our communities? We have a lot of crime and violence going about. How many of us get out there in the community? How many of us get it get on, on committees so that we can plan with our with our religious background, with our anointing from God, because God has set us apart. How many of us take up our duties as Christians to be a part of that and to create the effect change in our community so that his environment, God's environment can be fully cared for. We are stewards. And so with proper stewardship of the environment, it is those whom God charge with his care. And that's us. And thirdly, we are blessed by God's directed and continued work. And this work he would have started in us, including the birth and the nurture, to birth and nurture children in the likeness received from God. We are blessed God has directed us to continue the work, right? That he started in us, right? The work has been started, but we must continue, all right? One greater in power and authority. When you are blessed, you are seen as one who is greater in power and authority. So when, just like when we are about, when we, when we are going to Jesus Christ, we bend our knees literally, or those who can't bend our knees, but we, meaning that we humble come before the Almighty God and we acknowledge him as a greater authority and we, we lord him up. We give him all the glory and we give him all the praise. All right? So, Blessed conveys the idea of one great in power and authority bending his knees to come down to the level of the one in need and provide his divine favor and blessings. Who did that? Jesus Christ. He came down to our level and he blessed us. So indeed, this is what God did in creation. And what Christ has done for us in salvation, Hebrews 1, verse 3. Likewise, our actions and attitudes should be redemptive in nature after the character we have received from God. So it's an example, right? We need to get down there, get down, bend our knees, get low, and to assist in steward stewarding God's creation. When last have we made a sacrifice 
get out of our way to, 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 to ensure that someone is a little bit more comfortable than he or she is. How many times have we taken our last and said, okay, fine, you need this more than me. And I'm giving you. So it's, 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 it's not just the, the literal environment. It's talking about how do we take care of the higher class of the, in the creation, the top, how do we take care, care of each other? All right? Are we still there? Any questions? We are here. We are following closely. Any questions? All right. There is something that I am going to. Can somebody read this for me? Um, sure. Yeah, this is, an, this is a little piece from Keith Witt. And uh, will someone just read that for me, please? I find it very interesting. And so I would want to share with everybody. All right, I'll read. Thank you it, so very much. It was common years ago for people dis to dispose of soda bottles improperly, myself included. This was before aluminum cans, which now prevail. After I was saved, I rolled down the window and chucked the empty bottle into the ditch as I had done numerous times before with no thoughts. I was immediately convicted and keenly aware that I was polluting down the God's creation. The spirit led us into truth, leads us, sorry, the spirit leads us into truth. Amen. Amen. All right. And I'm sure a lot of us can say, but some of us still do it, you know. Some of us even not in church and we eat our little wrappers and we just push it in the windowsill or we just drop it. Even the chewing gum, sometimes when we put it and we put it under the, the desk, the chairs and whatever. Um, We still do that. But we are learning today that it's these simple things are very big in the sight of God. And it, this is it's not taking care of the environment at all. Right, and I mean, oftentimes I ask my my students, "Would you like to sit on a chair when you get up? You find that you have chewing gum stain on your clothes. So if you don't like it, don't put the chewing gum on the desk, on the chair. That somebody can actually, or, or even on the floor, you know. So we just need to take care of our environment. Okay, let's move on quickly." All right, let's look at some ways in which we can take care of the literal environment. We're cleaning up the beach. We're getting everybody involved, whether you're white or you're black or whatever nature, um, nation you are, whatever social class you are, whether you have a lot of money or you don't have a lot of money. But we need as a group of people to take care of our environment. So we need to dispose of our garbage well, because when we throw all these things in the in the seawater, we will eventually not have any fish to eat anymore. And when we throw our garbage improperly, you know, not disposing of them properly, we are going to have all sort of diseases, which is going to affect not just our children, but all of us. And so this is just a little thing to show us. So we need to take care of our environment, literal environment, because if we do not, we are, we are actually going against the will of God. That this is God's beach, land, and everything. So we need to take care of it. Amen. 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 How do we dispose of our trash? You are just asking your question. I wanted to add too that you know it's not just about how we dispose of or clean up, but even just replanting, planting a tree. You know, mm -hmm. planting um, a tree and watering an area that seem, you know, that drought is affecting is one way of helping to take care of our, our environment. Wonderful. As You're answering question two there, sis. Go ahead. Sorry. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so Go ahead. <laughs> so Odette hand is up. I love her. Oh, okay. Sister Odette, go ahead, please. Go ahead. No? Well, probably okay. when, 
went up um, right. yeah. How do we store the environment? I like the point you made, sis. Plant something. Plant a little sorrel. Plant a little... When you get the... Let me just share something. And because I'm a 4 age person, you, when you get your, your skeleton, you can cut like, a, like a, a, an inch off the bottom and replant it. And you'll get skeleton from that. I don't even have to root it up when you're gone. You can just cut off a part of the skeleton and go season your pot. So eventually, you may not have to go and buy a lot of skeleton anymore. So just the skeleton, just cut off that little bottom section here and plant it. Even a little cup. So plant something. Plant a tree to preserve the land from, 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 from slipping or landslide or, you know, you know, I don't want to get use terms that the social study people will or the, the environmentalist will say I'm using the wrong terms. So landslide and land slippage, land slippage and so on. So we need to preserve our land. We don't wait until the landslide. I mean, we're walking on the road and we see, or we're driving on the road and we see a, 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 a something cut across the road, like a, a tree, a, you know, a small tree or a tire, or some, a stone in the road. We're not waiting for the prime minister to come and pick up the stone. Can we, you know, can we be the responsible citizen that we get up? And we move that thing out of the road rather than trying to 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 you know to dive away from it, swerve away from it, and in swerving away, we end up getting you know crashing in another vehicle or hitting somebody down. We just need to be responsible and not wait for others to do it. Once you can do it, you go ahead and do it. As simple as that, you know. Amen. All right, let me move on. Time is against us. All right, so we're going to look at Psalm 8, verse 1 to 9. So three points. God is purposeful. God has established strongholds. God creative power. So, O Lord, O Lord, O excellent is thy name in all the earth, who has set the glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings, that's of ordained strength because of thy enemies. No, our God is all powerful. There is a purpose behind everything that God does. God is very strategic. Everything that He does is for a purpose. And the created order is no different. Right? So God created order. And how did God create order? Now, let us look at, there's a, David confirmed that God has determined a ruling place or a level for every aspect of created beings. As, you know, every created being. David began by addressing the Lord with his proper name, Yahweh. This is often called the ineffable, effable, effable, unspeakable name of God. In its purest form, it is the sound made by breathing in way and exhaling way, right? Thus, it is the sound of life itself. This is comforting. When I do that, I feel like I'm relaxing. Just the simple relaxing. So it's a powerful name. Right? Only in him do we breathe and live. Only in Christ, in Yahweh, do we breathe and live. Acts 17 verse 28. So the emphasis is on the reverence for the divine character and the presence of God. And his characteristics as a source of all life, right? So therefore, the name is majestically superior in all creation and his splendor. Grandiose and authority reign supreme above all creation. It's glory. So whatever is, is done is purposeful and is to bring 
glory unto himself. So when he made you Bishop Atkinson, is to bring glory unto him. Sister Parnell is to give mm -hmm. glory. When you give your testimony and you share your testimony of how God has been good to you, then you are giving glory unto him. Amen? So things are not done by mistake. He's purposeful what, in whatever he does. All right? God has established strongholds. All right? No, when God established strongholds, you know, that is well done. Right? It, he has given you strength. He has ordained you a man of God. When, when God puts you at stone, Bishop Atkinson, no man can take you down. They will fight, but God is very purposeful. He knows why he wants you to be at Stony Hill at this time. You don't know how you don't know the plans that the Lord has for you. He may he may have use for you somewhere else where he needs you to glorify him, or your actions will glorify him. But at this time, he his purpose is for you to be at Stony Hill, and he would have strengthened you. He would have ordained you, right? Amen. 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 And so even from birth, the Lord would be strategic. He would be very purposeful in, in establishing strongholds on even the infants and the nursing babies. Right? So this is why we need to teach the children, teach them how to, how, how to behave. We need to bring them up, you know? In the in the in 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 the, in the faith, let them understand why they are here and why it is important to Lord our Savior to big him up and to give him thanks. Even when we teach them, you get something to eat, give thanks, give thanks. That's training, that's discipling. You're giving thanks, no matter what it is. Give thanks for everything. And when he mentioned about the children. Children, when you tell children something, you know, they're going to know, they're going to listen. I remember I teach fashion and my daughter was very young when she was going to prep school. And she would have come to my class, to my school and I she would have heard me teaching the children that a seam is a line of stitching that join two or more pieces of fabric together. Now she went to her class teacher and her teacher was talking about seam the story. And she was saying, like when they, they pressed it, press the clothes and a sharp. And she said, No, that's not a seam. And she said, Yes, Daddy, that's a seam. She said, No. My mommy is a clothing and textile teacher. And she said, This section is the seam. Right? The teacher taught, you know, told me about it. And I'm saying, she she held on to that because she believes her mommy. So when, when, when the children are told something, they are going to believe. So when parents teach them well, they are going to believe. And so this childlike faith is a strength, right? It's strength that should be established and strengths that are established by God's rightful place in our lives and over the power of enemies. You want a, a childlike strength. Faith is the strength. A childlike faith is a strength, right? That establish God's rightful place in our lives and over the, the power of our enemies. Amen? Very powerful line. And I want to say that the childlike faith, they hold on to something. So you can just imagine it all up on the wrong something. And so we need to be like the children. Hold on. Hold on to the strength that the Lord has given us. He established strongholds. Amen. The next one I'm going to look at is God's creative power. There's power. There's power. There's power. God's creative power. Now, this can lead us to think 
we are insignificant in the universe, but not at all. It did the same for David. He wondered how God is even aware of his little existence or why he takes the time to interact with, 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 with us. Oh God, just look, look, look little Paulette right here so and think about me. But he cares for everybody. God's creative power. God's creative power. He takes time. He takes time to interact with us. He would visit us. Amen? Amen. God. Amen. God. He would know he would have noted humanity. And he's made lower than the angels in rank and ability. Man, that he's higher than the angels, you know, because he's the firstborn. He's supreme, right? He has privilege. He's ex, you know, this distinct figure. But guess what? He made himself lower than the angels. For me. Right? So that he could have redeemed me. He could have put me in order he could have put this environment in order so that i could i can survive right so he made himself lower in rank and ability yet god has chosen to crown or to surround us with glory and honor We have dominion over and therefore responsibility for all creation in our sphere of influence. All the little areas that we are around, we are accountable for how we take care of our environment or a space around us. All right? Um. Okay, let me go a little quick with this. Um, right, so we are looking at a little section that's a reading of Hebrew passage indicates that Christ was made a little lower than the angels and then his appearance and redemptive work on earth placed us under his dominion and leadership, a headship and place us in the realm of his power to assist us in our God-given duty. So whatever duties we have to do it, we have to do, we need to do it because we have been given power. All right. So let us go now to section three. And I'm wrapping up. I'm wrapping up. God will redeem creation. All right. So... Why would God redeem creation? So Romans 8, 18 to 25, Isaiah 11, verse 5 to 9, and Revelation 22, verse 1 to 5. Paul says that after careful consideration, after M. Consider, he said that the suffering or afflictions we presently endure are not even comparable with the glory or magnificence we have received already through the cross and shall be manifested fully, shall be revealed fully in us when we see Christ face to face. So here we are looking at future glory. The sufferings, afflictions that we're going through is not comparable to what is going to happen later on. If we are to share his glory, we must also share his sufferings. Do you think that the sufferings and afflictions we presently endure can be compared to that of Christ? Look at what he has gone through when he was on earth. Can you think that what we are going through is is more or can be compared to what he went through 
and can do you think that all the sufferings and afflictions we presently endure can be compared to the glory that we shall receive further down the line? Can I, I'll give you 30 seconds. So anybody who wants to share at this point, 30 seconds. Okay. Okay. When we see Christ face to face, then the full glory will be revealed. The writer says, we shall see him as he is. And we shall be like him. First John 3, verse 2. We shall see him as he is. And we shall be like him. Are you excited? Are you excited? So, but guess what? We have a dilemma. There's a dilemma here, right? Or a dilemma. Redemption places us in the kingdom but we are still in this world. So we have to now face up with all sorts of things happening there. Hmm? We, have a, we are in the world, and so the, all the suffering and the affliction is going to be there. We have received the benefits of that redemption in part, but must be delivered from the fallen world order to receive the full manifestation of God's glory. We are, we are, um, we are re redeemed, but we are still not there yet. We are in this world, even though we are in this world, we are not of the world. And so a lot of things are going to be facing about how do we deal with all the, 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 the tribulations? How do we deal with the, 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 problems that we face mm? the afflictions we are not alone we are not alone you are not alone sister marvin whatever you're going through creation can refer to anyone anyone the creature I am a creature, the animal a creature, the plants and animal in, 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 in this creation. So we are not alone in anticipating that time. All of creation is waiting. There's earnest expectation. There is the eager anticipation manifestation or the full revelation of the promise. The promise is there, we know the promise, but we are eager. When is this going to be over? When are we going to have life more abundantly? When are we going to be at peace? Late brethren, we live in this state of frustration and vanity because of the consequences of Adam sin. And this Adam, as a result of Adam's sin, corruption is brought to us. There is bondage, there is decay, there is um problems around us, and we can name them all the different, even now we can see what is upon us. Right now, you can't if, if you if you say if somebody decides that they want to be a cat and you don't want a meow and say that he's a cat you can be sued in some parts of the world if you come and you say don't call me today i want to feed i want to name mr morgan you have to call me mr morgan and if you don't call me mr morgan i'm gonna sue you you're gonna lose your job this is what is up on us corruption bondage decay bondage of decay but all of the created world will cry with a heart deep sorrow. We groan, we travail, but we have the first fruit of the spirit. 
but await the full redemption of our body. We have the, the first fruit of the spirit, but still awaiting the full redemption of our body. The effects of sin are, in, are indeed horrible, but nothing compared to the redemption, the power of God. Nothing compared to the redemptive power of God. So whatever going through, mm, it is because we are still in this world, but God will take care of us and we will trust we should we should trust him trust him and guess what he's going to give us peace there's going to be peace Isaiah 11 verse 5 to 9 there is going to be peace the prophet Isaiah looked at two distinct and important characteristics one in the righteousness which encompasses all the divine characteristics that make God trustworthy. Righteousness, which encompasses all the divine characteristics that make God trustworthy. And we know we can name them out why God is trustworthy. He's, he does whatever he says he will do. First of all, let us look at, he said he would have saved Adam falling ways. And yes, he did. He did come and he suffered for us and he went through all the beatings and the stripes. So every time you're feeling a headache, you say, you know what? Christ has gotten that stripe for this headache and I'm not accepting it. And so I'm going to get up and make sure I drink tea when we're supposed to drink tea. Eat on time. How are we taking care of our environment? We know if we don't eat properly, something is going to happen. So let us take full control of what is happening to us and make sure prevent what can be prevented. All right? Faithfulness or dependable steadfastness. Faithfulness. Hold on to what you believe in. Do what you're supposed to do. Be consistent. Make sure we are dependable. What characteristics are we showing this um, today as to, um, environment stores? Huh? What Christ says he does. He reigns. He, 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 he protects. He guides. So his reign will bring about a transformation that turns the presently known characteristics of the world upside down. And when he turns it upside down, what will happen? Adversaries will, adversaries will no longer be such. Dangerous animals will be transformed and take on the characteristics of the Prince of Peace. So you don't have to be afraid of the snakes anymore, the lions, because they will be loving. Everything will be at peace. So the effects of sin will be replaced with a full knowledge of the Lord. So all the groaning of creation will be silence because there's no peace. The Lord has provided peace for us. Look, the man, yes, all the animals and the children and everybody, all the different scary animals are not scary anymore. Mm? They're not scary anymore. I know the plans that the Lord has for me. See? We are at peace. Isn't that lady on the right looking at she's at peace? Yes, she's at peace. All right, amen. Now let's go to the next slide. Um, final thing, we're looking at healing, blessing, and security. Revelation. Right? Revelation. How can we look at the beauty of this, the night sky? the beauty around us and the complexity of creation and fail to recognize the presence and activity of God. We have been called to be faithful and careful stewards of God's creation and the redemptive plan. This includes proper care of the environment. Our actions always reflect what we truly believe. Maintaining a biblical understanding of the environment will affect the way we treat is it we treat his environment. We are neither to harm nor to worship it. Worship is always directed to the supreme creator of heaven and earth. 
So we are not going to worship. We're not going to idolize the environment. Who do we give the worship to? We give the worship to God the Almighty. All right? So John's, John sees a pure river of, of, of the water of life shining as crystal in the new Jerusalem. So two aspects are of importance. First, you look at the source of the river. The river is God, right? Where the river flowing? The river is flowing from God. And it originates from his throne. It's a proper, proper river, proper, proper water. It's coming from the source of God and it originates from the throne. So the foundations of God's throne is righteousness and justice. What is it? Righteousness and justice. Everything that flows from God is consistent with his nature is, and gives him glory and gives him, and there's benefits of humanity. So it will benefit us, benefit humanity. Everything that comes from is consistent with nature. All right? Righteousness and justice flowing from the throne. All right? It is clear, pure, and imparts life. This water reflects God's awesomeness. Who do, how do we see God? That's what we are seeing. The water reflects the awesomeness of God. And it is clear, it is pure, and imparts life. As it flows from the throne through the, to, to the main street, it causes trees of life to spring forth. There are three aspects of, 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 of um, actually depicted by the river. The Holy Spirit, right? The Holy Spirit continually flowing from the throne. The Holy Spirit. There is abundant life and there is immortality. We all know of that. So here we're talking about there is healing, there is blessing. What do you need? He's still healing. He's still blessing. And he's still securing his children. All are true. The river is easily accessible to the inhabitants of the city. Christians, we still can inhabit. We can still access all the things that the river flowing with. Whatever the healing, whatever blessing, whatever security, whatever you need from the Lord is flowing in the river. It, it, it takes care of your health. The fruit, the leaves, the juice, everything. This is the nature of life. It imparts life. And so there is peace. There is safety. There is healing. There is blessing. There is security. So because of the fall in Eden, many associate the tree of life with the curse of sin. But here, what is happening? The river flowing from God, originating from the throne, has dispelled the, that saying. The tree of life is no more a curse. It's no more a curse. Because Christ had come and I would have removed that curse and brought paradise. So let us be assured of this truth in that the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in the city, in our space, in our environment. Let us stand direct. Let us accept God. Let us ac accept what God ha has been giving unto us. It's the river is flowing. Let us grab there. They are in face-to-face -face relationship with him. He has redeemed the minister unto him. They ha he has redeemed all of us. He has redeemed us. Let us be brave. Let us be bold. Let us hold on. Let us drink that water. Let us accept what is flowing from the throne. There's nothing. The curse is dispelled. 
the curse is not there anymore because Christ has come and he has redeemed us. What should we do now? Shall we be perfect? Shall we lay ourselves careless? Shall we destroy the environment of Christ? Shall we destroy our bodies? Shall we destroy the, the, the physical environment? No, we should not. So we worship God, not the environment he created. Taking care of the environment is a natural overflow of our relationship with God. We understand perfectly the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. We should strive to treat it as such. We should be good stewards of what God has given us. We understand that the environment is temporal, not eternal. It will be renewed one day without the marks of sin. We know the world will not suffer in ice age, as they would tell us about the climate change. God is the future and God is our hope. And so when we read the scripture, we believe what the future in store for us. We are redeemed. We have peace. And I am not going to go any further because we have long passed. But I encourage you to continue reading up. Let us take care of our environment and let us not worship our environment, but to take care of because this is our duty. And as we, because when we take care of the environment, we are actually worshiping God. So let us continue to be worship, worship us because God's hand of, of protection will be upon those who worship him. And let us take care of ourselves. God bless you. Thanks for having me. I hope I did not rush it too much and that you have learned. And thank you so very much for bearing with me. I have gone over time. I do apologize. I know hand over to um, our superintendent. Thank you so very much, Sister Morgan. Very good, very good. Let us give bless her the Lord. Oh, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Thank you for the timely delivery of the Amen. letter. So much to learn this afternoon we learn week after week you know but we recognize that our duty is not just about our spiritual standing with christ and our spiritual life it's a balance amen also have a role in this earth right yes. the yes. physical environment in which we operate and we have to take care of it God is, I mean, the lesson has brought so many things, you know, to our attention, how God, how good God Amen. is. And, you Amen. know, the, made the heaven and the earth and he took the time out, you know, and if you can just reflect the, 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 the fresh water, the salt water, the sea, salted, right? The pond and the rivers, you know, fresh water, the many species of, 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 of fishes and, and birds and animals, you know, and all of those things, he just called them into being. He called them into being. They are so beautiful. But yet for us, mankind, he did not call us into being. He took the time out to make us. And just as how he took care of those things that he just called into being, took care of them, right? Much less us, man, who he would have taken time out to make in his own image. And we have, we are given dominion over all these things. And we have to help to replenish and take care, right? And, and that's one way of showing gratitude and respect Amen. to the of the universe. And somebody make, an artist make something beautiful and you just smash it you know, and just throw it away. Then you, what you do, you're disrespecting, you know, the creative work of the artist. And it's the same thing. If we, if we do not take care of what God has created, then we are disrespecting. We are not appreciative of what he has done. And when he made them, he said that every fowl of the air, every beast 
um, and everything, every green herb was made for meat, you know, made for us, you know. For healing. For, for healing, right? For feeding, for beautification. He made them all for us also to enjoy, right? And so it pains his heart when we really do not appreciate and take care of. So let us reflect. Look at how much we can do to help, to, to take care of the environment, you know. Um, be a part of a group, or if, if you're not a part of a group, do it by yourself, right? Beautify your environment. Take care of the animals, the birds, the, the bees, or, you know, of the field. Let us take care of God's creation, right? And be grateful for it. God wants us to do that. Beautiful lesson. Thanks for the reminder, Sister Morgan. I am blessed. And I'm yeah. sure I'm not the only one that is blessed and is reminded of our duty, right? So we don't want to be of heavenly, you know, we, we, we only have use to heaven and, of, and, and earth no good. No earthly, right? good. No earthly good. We can't be like that. God wants a balance. Amen. Right? A balance. God bless you. And so I have here with, with us our pastor, you know, and I'm so grateful. Bishop Conrad Atkinson is here with us, and I would want to give him, you know, the opportunity to, to have the final word before we close off in prayer. Thank you very much, Sister White. Excellent delivery of the lesson, Sister Morgan. And I tell you, it seemed like some setup for me or maybe just some um, divine coincidence. But a few days ago, I was at the Pegasus, um, the 4 H Club and the Forestry Department put on a special um, um, event, you know, um, one with something have to do with in terms of the environment and, and um, community. And when I look and, and learn, you know, so much in terms of greenhouse replanting and what not to do in terms of the, the, the forest and, the, um, um, you know, taking care of the environment and then now to have this lesson. And when they, uh, the, that part of the lesson about, um, I think, immediate conviction, how the person felt when, you know, in terms of just wrongfully disposing of the bottle, my mind flashed back to I was traveling, I was driving, and someone from the vehicle threw something out on the road. And I found myself stop and reverse and ask the person to pick it up. I, yes. So, you know, and just recently I've been thinking, um, am I taking care of all of what God has placed in my, in my care? And so, you know, very, 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 um, you call it now in terms of potent and timely and right timing in terms of the, the Sunday school lesson. God bless you. Let us continue to, you know, just dig in the word. Want to remind us as it is on our lips, our hearts, our mind, uh, that rally will be this Friday. And please make every effort to and choir practice. Um, rally choir practice will be Monday and Wednesday. And also for Sunday now. Uh, we want to add a little, you know, a little um, intentional just into Sunday, like we did today, but it's going to be hat and tie. All right. So men, all the brothers, all the men in tie and all the, the women, the sisters, you know, wearing their hat, what, whatever kind of hat you want, brother, slim hat, um, skull hat, whatever hat. All right. God bless you. Have a great rest of the evening. Yes, the Lord. Thank you very much, Bishop. Uh, we have online our uh, other superintendent, Brother Basil Jones. Brother Basil, may I ask you to pray the closing prayer for us, sir? Okay. Let us pray. Oh God and our Father, we thank you, Lord, for your love. We thank you for your goodness towards us. We thank you, Lord, for allowing us to have a Sunday school this evening. We thank you for our teacher. We thank you for the lesson. 
We thank you for the way you use her, dear Lord God. And I pray in the name of Jesus that you will continue to use her, continue to provide and make way for her that she can be of great value to your house of worship. Cover her and her family and help them, Lord, to continue to look to you. Bless us as students as we assemble this evening to hear your words. God, I pray that you'll help us to have that zeal always wanting to hear and learn more of you and of your words. Cover us now and be with us, dear Lord, as we go in different places, dear God. Be thou our help and be thou our guide. Cover us each and every one this evening. We look to you and we tell you thanks. In Jesus' holy precious name we pray. Amen. 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 And, and we just want to also ask the Lord to cover and to heal Sister Morgan, her daughter, her granddaughter. And she had, had indicated that she's not feeling too well. So we are asking you, Lord, to touch them, heal them, and make Amen. them healthy. Amen. Oh, Thank you very much, Amen. everyone, for being here. Uh, we invite you next week, same time, 6 p.m., same platform, Zoom, as we continue to study the Word of God. And the theme, the topic of the lesson for next week, the next, the next lesson, sorry, I can't find it. Use technology wisely. Wisely, we're in a technological age. Use technology wisely. So learn how to use technology, technology wisely. All right, so that's what we'll be looking at next week. Come geared up, right? Um, come, come like a sponge to absorb, right? Amen. Um, <laughs> so that we can be able to use technology wisely. God bless you, everyone. God bless you. Bless you. And thanks. Bless you.